Professor Chomsky, you've been a leading critic of U.S. imperial wars in Vietnam, Iraq, Afghanistan, and you've also spoken about how many Americans, uh, when asked, you know, how many people died in, in the, the war in Vietnam, I think answered 200,000, and you said it's, it's actually closer to three to four million, and, and compared this to a denial of the Holocaust. And yet since the first Iraq war, through the wars in Iraq and Afghanistan and the sanctions, it's estimated that about six million Muslims have died in the Middle East through US bombing campaigns. What does that tell us and how do we steer this country in another direction away from violence? Well, I think the, uh, this, the situation's a little bit worse than what you described. The main study of uh, estimates of uh, Vietnamese dead was 100,000. And that was in a university setting which is in a liberal, very liberal community in an elite university. What you'd get if you asked this question across the country, I have no idea, it hasn't been done. Uh, but that was 100,000, which is a tiny fraction of the number of Vietnamese who died. During the war itself, it was probably close to four million, and many are continuing to die from the effects of chemical warfare. We don't know how many. So it's, uh, it is very much like uh, Holocaust denial. Uh, somebody who said that, you know, if in Germany, uh, at an elite university, uh, people were asked how many Jews died in the Holocaust, and they said, uh, say, 100,000. You think there's a problem in Germany, a cultural, social, educational problem. And that's something that we have to face. Uh, going back, to going on to Iraq, uh, the uh, uh, there are inter there's a very inter the there was a sanctions. You mentioned the sanctions. This is before the war. This is under Clinton, not Bush. Under Clinton, there was a sanctions program administered by the UN, but of course it was a U.S. program. Uh, there were two. There were uh, ad the administrators of the program were uh, distinguished uh, international diplomats. The first one, Irish, uh, uh, resigned in protest because he described the uh, the uh, sanctions as genocidal. He didn't want to be part of it. The second one, uh, Hans von Sponek, also a distinguished international diplomat. Uh, stayed on for, uh, who incidentally, both of them had detailed information about what was happening in Iraq. They had investigators all over the place that certainly knew more about Iraq than the CIA, which admittedly is not a terribly high bar, but probably had the best information about Iraq of any Westerners. And they were, uh, von Sponek also was completely appalled uh, after a few years, resigned in protest charged that they were genocidal, and went on to write a book, an important book, called A Different Form of War. Uh, you probably haven't read the book or heard about it. And one of the reasons is it wasn't mentioned in the United States. No reviews, no commentary, scholarship doesn't refer to it. It's a detailed examination, very close examination, of the way the sanctions were carrying out, we're destroying the society, carrying out what he called genocide, killing hundreds of thousands of people, and furthermore, strengthening the tyrant. People were compelled to rely on Saddam's fairly efficient rationing system simply to survive. And if that hadn't, I'm now going beyond von Sponek, I've talked to him about it actually, and he pretty much agrees that it's very likely that this saved Saddam from being overthrown from within, which has happened to dictators over and over. Uh, Somoza, uh, Marcos, uh, Mobutu, uh, Ceausescu, uh, you know, uh, 
one after another, has been overthrown by popular movements within, even though they were brutal and harsh dictators. It might very well have been the fate of Saddam, but he was strengthened by the sanctions which were carrying out virtual genocide, in von Sponek's words, against the uh, population, the population that was forced, that was decimated and forced to simply rely on him for survival. Uh, do we know anything about this? Like I say, the book that details it uh, is unknown, not reviewed, not mentioned. Well, that's a particular form of the nationalist pathology that Chris was talking about, uh, as is the horrifying case of the uh, uh, estimate of the toll that our war took in Vietnam. And you can add this in case after case. Just take a look at the day's newspapers. Huge uproar about a what's called a caravan of people from Central America uh, coming to the United States, according to our leader, uh, an invasion of the country, sending a thousand troops down there. It's about one soldier for every child in the caravan. Uh, who are these people? These are people from fleeing from regions that we destroyed. Uh, Reagan's wars in Central America were vicious and brutal. Uh, hundreds of thousands of people killed, uh, masses uh, uh, tortured, uh, uh, widows, orphans, uh, every form of atrocity you can think of. Uh, Trump, in fact, is uh, imitating his hero, Reagan, with his uh, hysteria, try building up hysteria about the invasion from Central America. You may recall that in 1985, uh, Ronald Reagan uh, strapped on his cowboy boots and uh, declared a national emergency uh, because uh, the, tr the Nicaraguan army was two days march from Harlingen, Texas, just about to overwhelm us. And the country was terrified just as many people are terrified now. This, for whatever reason, is probably the most frightened country in the world, has been for a long time. I don't know if that corresponds to your experience, but I've seen nothing like it elsewhere. And it doesn't take much for, a, for the most ridiculous claim to be made. And this is a case where people are not just fleeing, but fleeing from what recreated it's not just Reagan's wars, which are bad enough. Uh, most of them are coming from Honduras. Why Honduras? It's been a pretty awful state for many years because of long-term U.S. intervention and domination. But something happened in 2009. Uh, there was a mildly reformist president, Mel Zelaya, who was kicked out in a military coup, he was condemned all over Latin America, most of the world, with one notable exception, uh, the Obama administration would not call it a military coup uh, for a very simple reason. If you call it a military coup, you're forced by congressional legislation to terminate military aid to the military junta that's ruling it. So therefore, for Obama, it wasn't a military coup. Uh, Honduras very quickly turned into a real hor horror chamber, uh, the homicide capital of the world. Then came a fake election under the military junta. It was condemned by the Organization of American States, by uh, Latin American countries. Again, one exception. It was praised by the United States as a move towards democracy. Now that just increased the horrors and the terror. End result, people flee. Uh, well, and therefore we uh, cringe in terror because we're being invaded by these uh, miserable families fleeing from uh, horror and destruction. Uh, that's a form of nationalism which is pretty hard to describe.